I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And what you're going to learn today, I have previously refused to make a video about because I thought it might be a little bit too dangerous. But I had to do this recently, and my policy is always, if you're doing something, make a video about it, and that's what I've done. And what you're going to learn today has to do with this power supply. With this unimpressive little thing is actually one of the best values in RC. It is a 1200 watt power supply for 55 bucks. Go do the math on watts per dollar and you'll see that nothing comes even close to this. And it's not just some cheap Chinese piece of junk either. This was made to power a rack mount server for Hewlett Packard. It is high quality, durable, reliable, has overcurrent, over temperature, all the protections. It's a great piece of kit. There's only one problem with it and that is that it outputs 12 volts. Now, for some of you, that's not a problem because a few chargers out there can actually reach their full rated output power when given 12 volts input. But many chargers out there need a higher input voltage to get the full output. If you want to learn more about that, there's a link to a video I made about that down in the video description. Suffice it to say, for many of you, if you don't have a 24 volt uh, power supply, your LiPo charger is not making as much power as it could. And I don't know about you, but uh, I don't like that. So today I'm going to show you how to combine two 12 volt power supplies and get a 1200 watt, 24 volt power supply for about, well, at the, currently it's about 55 bucks for one. So about 110 bucks for two. It used to be a lot cheaper before the Bitcoin people crank the price up. This concept will also apply if you're using a smaller one, like there's a 750 watt version available for about 30 bucks, and that's still a pretty good deal. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do it. When you're done with this video, you will have a 1200 watt, 24 volt power supply, but you're gonna need something to put it in to make it look nice, carry it around, and maybe even have a nice shiny display to show you how many of those awesome watts you're actually using. That's where this comes in. This is my ammo can power supply, and I think it's pretty cool. If you want a full parts list for how to build this exact thing, check out the link down in the video description over on my webpage. So here are the two power supplies. And each power supply has a 12 volt output, positive and a negative ground reference. And what we need to do in order to make a 24 volt power supply is this. We need to take the 12 volt output of one and connect it to the negative terminal of the other. So that plus 12 volts becomes zero volts for this guy. And then PSU number two adds 12 volts to that. And as a result, we get 24 volts out. Okay. Zero volts there or ground. 12 volts there and 24 volts out of there. See, couldn't be simpler. Well, there's a catch. And the catch comes in when we start thinking about how mains power affects this. And mains power has three uh, pins, three terminals. You know, if you just look at your plug, there's three pins on it. One is the load, one is neutral, and one is ground. And ground is the one that we're concerned with. Load and neutral are basically how it gets AC power. Ground is there for safety, and ground is connected to the chassis of each of these power supplies, the case, to so the case of each of these power supplies. And the reason for that is so that if uh, one of the mains wires comes into contact with the case somehow, like it's broken or something's gone wrong, then the case would become energized. And if you touch the case, you would get shocked with 120 or 240 volts mains power. That's bad. By connecting the case of the power supply to ground, it means that if the case becomes energized, the energy is shunted to ground and everything, well, you pop the breaker basically. But here's the problem. Internally, the DC negative terminal gets its ground reference from mains ground. And that is a problem because when we connect plus 12 volts to ground, ah, now what we have is we have a short circuit from 12 volts DC all the way back to mains ground. And that, cre that creates a short circuit and PSU number one shuts down. 
because it, it's got an overcurrent condition and it shuts down. So in order to fix this, we need to break this connection between DC minus and mains ground in PSU number two. PSU number two is going to be referred to as the high side PSU and PSU number one is going to be referred to as the low side high side because it's getting plus 12 volts as its input. And on the high side, we need to break this connection. This is referred to as floating the DC ground. Float the DC ground or DC negative maybe. I don't know, float the DC ground. Anyway, now there's another approach to this and that is to break this connection. And you can do that simply by removing the ground pin from the electrical plug. You literally just grab it with the pliers and pull it out. That works, but that is a terrible idea. And the reason is because if you do that, then if this PSU becomes energized, if something goes wrong internally and the mains, uh, the hot wire comes into contact with the case, this PSU can become energized with mains voltage and it will not pop the breaker anymore. You will have circumvented that and that's very dangerous. You could touch this and get shocked with mains voltage. So you don't want to do a trick you'll hear about on the internet where you just pull the ground pin out of this guy's plug. It's very simple, but it's dangerous. This method of floating the DC ground is not without risk, but it is much, much safer than, than this method. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. First thing you're going to do is remove the four screws from the top of the power supply. Having done that, you should now be able to open the top of the power supply like this. It's hinged and it should just lift right off as you see here. Next, we need to remove these two screws, one and two. And these are two of the three standoffs that we need to isolate from the case. It's through these screw holes that the circuit board is connected to the case. And that is where the DC negative is connected electrically to mains ground. So we're gonna take these screws out and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna isolate these standoffs and screw holes from the case. Next, remove the four screws that are mounting the fan to the case. There's a third standoff you're gonna to need to get at and in order to get at it, you're gonna to need to remove this screw which connects the mains ground pin to the case. Now you can lift out the plug and underneath there, you can see that there's a third mounting screw, which you can take out. At this point, you can very carefully begin to separate the electronics from the outer case. As you remove the electronics, be careful not to tear this black rubbery sheet that's surrounding them. That's important electrical isolation. And you see me struggling here. I can't get the green LED to release, so it'll kind of just be hanging on there for the rest of this. That's okay. The next step is to file down the standoffs so that you have room to put a nylon M3 washer on the standoff so that the circuit board is not touching the standoff. Be really careful with the metal filings here. Obviously, it would be really bad if a bunch of random metal filings got into your circuit board. So you can see I'm, I'm carefully sort of filing so the filings fall down and then I'm going to carefully sort of dust them away so they don't stay in there. You only need to file down the two front standoffs, which have some kind of little protrusion that sticks up into the board and gets in the way of the M3 washer. The standoff in the back doesn't have that protrusion and doesn't need to be filed down. Here's what the front standoffs will look like after you're done filing them down. Next, you're going to take an M3 nylon washer and insert it between the circuit board and the standoff that you filed down. I've got a link down in the video description to an Amazon listing for M3 nylon washers if you need them. And here I'm installing an M3 nylon screw back in the mounting hole. You have to use a nylon screw because the screw will give conductivity to the circuit board as well. I'm going to do the same thing for the second front standoff, M3 nylon washer, 
and M3 nylon screw. As you're doing this, resist the temptation to use something like electrical tape. You, it's not a permanent solution to use electrical tape to isolate something like this. It'll rub, it'll wear, and eventually you'll end up with a problem. Use the right stuff here. Notice that I am not fully tightening these screws at this point. We need the board to be slightly loose for the next step. Here in the back, we're gonna isolate this standoff the same way. This one is a real pain to get lined up. So, good luck. Yay, there's our M3 nylon screw, and you know, I would, I'm not going to show you the washer. So now we're going to put back the plug, and we will put back this uh, screw that connects the ground wire of the plug to the case. Now we're going to do some safety checks, and the first thing to check is that you do have continuity between the case and the ground prong of the mains plug. You do not want continuity between the hot or the neutral. You do want continuity between the ground and case. Then we're gonna check for continuity between the case and the output pads, and you should not have continuity, but I couldn't remember which one was ground and which one was 12 volts, but you should not have continuity between them. You're good to go now. After reassembling the power supply, you're gonna solder a 220 ohm resistor between the first and the fourth pads on the, on the on the plug of the power supply. This will cause it to power on when you plug in mains power. If you don't have a 220 ohm resistor, eh, anything up to maybe 1K might work, but basically you want around 200, 300 ohms. That's, the, that's what seems to work the best. And after plugging it in, you should get a green light right here and 12 volts output between the two big pads. You are good to go. The final step then is to wire up the power supplies as shown here. Remember PSU number two, that's the one you just modded. PSU number one doesn't need to be modded. One last thing, remember these guys can push like 70 amps. So make sure you select your wire gauge accordingly, but you're probably up to that if you've come this far. Happy flying.